Hi everyone. On August 7th, the Holy Orthodox Church celebrates the memory of a remarkable man who seems to jump into the pages of church history, escape for a little while, and then jump right back in. His name is Narcissus, and he was Patriarch of Jerusalem and also would become a Holy Hieromartyr, born in the year 96 AD. But yet most of the story that we know about him, uh, which comes from the church historian Eusebius, uh, who confirms his veneration at that time, well, most of what we know occurs much later in life. In fact, Narcissus was quite an elderly man when he assumed the Patriarchate of Jerusalem. He was very quiet, contemplative, and studious, and was someone who, it would seem, would take miracles almost for granted. One year in the Church of the Holy Resurrection at Pascha, they had run out of oil for the lamps and didn't know what they were going to do. and They didn't seem to have any anywhere else. So they came to the patriarch and asked him about it. And he said, well, bring me some large containers of water. And they did. And then he said a prayer and blessed them and said, go and go ahead and fill the lamps. Of course, they are a little perplexed by this whole thing. But they did what they were instructed, and lo and behold, when they were pouring the water into the lamps, the water had become oil. So that particular Pascha must have been a very meaningful one and a very bright one indeed. But as all hierarchs who are in charge of large numbers of people, this seems to be the common lot of bishops, let alone patriarchs, to get slandered from time to time, the same thing happened to Narcissus. There were three men who really could not stand this guy at all. They wanted nothing to do with him because their ways were not his ways, and in fact their ways were not God's ways either. And because of this, they really were irritated by him. This is certainly nothing that's uncommon because as we know, when you are around a saint, it seems like you're either going to be really drawn to them or because of their holiness, your failures will be exposed and you are repelled by them. Well, in this case, these three men were absolutely repelled. And in fact, not only were they willing to slander, but they were taking oaths on their slanders. One said that he would take it hoping that fire would come upon him, and another that great disease would hit him, and the third that he would be blinded. So this was quite astounding at the time, that someone could lie like that and make such a serious oath. Well, the patriarch Narcissus was really not wanting anything to do with this. He was concerned about scandals in the church, and he had such a studious nature anyway that he simply retired from office and went out into the desert where he remained for a good number of years. In fact, three different patriarchs would succeed him uh, after he had resigned. Well, as it turned out, these three men who had so slandered him, and during this time, of course, remember that the departure of St. Narcissus only increased his adoration by the multitude who knew him and who have heard of his, of his escape into the desert. These three men were eventually met by the very things that they took an oath on. The first man, he and his entire family, were destroyed in their home by a fire. The second man developed some sort of really ravaging disease that was very visible to all. And the third man, when he had heard of the followers of St. Narcissus and the devotion that they had to him, became so repentant, very repentant, so that he was weeping constantly day and night, so much so that his eyes ended up being destroyed by the tears that washed down his, faith, his face. And so he became blind even in the face of his repentance. Ultimately, St. Narcissus, as I said at the very beginning, popped back up into Jerusalem after being probably 15, 16 years in the desert. And the people there were ecstatic. They really wanted him to assume again the position of Patriarch of Jerusalem. And so after the last one, which was Patriarch Gordius, 
had reposed, Narcissus did indeed take over the Patriarchate again, even though he was in no state at that point to be able to fulfill his duties because of his great age. And so they actually had a man transferred over uh, from another bishopric named Alexander, who would serve as his assistant until the holy Narcissus eventually died. And die he did, even at the end of a long and illustrious career in, uh, as patriarch and as really a desert father. His reward at the end was to be martyred by the sword near the very, very, very end of his patriarchate. He had already had to stop doing anything and let Alexander do most of it and was probably anticipating an even quieter final retirement back in the desert. But because of the things that he had been saying, because of his proclamation of the Orthodox faith, and because of the absolute abhorrence that the rulers in the Roman Empire had at the time for Christianity, he met his end in a martyric manner where he now enjoys great glory with our Lord Jesus Christ. St. Narcissus, born in 96 AD, finally ended his life as Patriarch of Jerusalem in the year 212.